Good evening and welcome to episode 349 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzamandumwa Kumalo. It's the Monday edition of the Private Property Podcast. And if you're joining us for the first time, welcome to it. You are tuned into the only daily property to- uh, podcast in South Africa, helping you on all your property needs. Now, it's been the long weekend. And to all our regular viewers on Facebook, Instagram, as well as on YouTube, welcome back. I want to find out from you what to do did you get up to this long weekend? I know oh, Mata Shinange held it down on Friday and, of course, kept you company. Uh, I actually had a, an opportunity to, to take a little bit of downtime, although I was actually working most of this weekend. I won't lie. There's always another project. There's always another deadline. And closing of quarter three is, is proving to be more hectic than I anticipated. But I want to find out from you at home, what did you get up to this long weekend? Maybe even did a DIY project. I know long weekends tend to be amazing for those. Uh, there's one that I'm kickstarting myself. And I certainly want to hear from you at home. Now, as you know, we are running incredible competitions and we ran one over the long weekend. There was a really great Heritage Heritage Day competition that we ran uh, on our Twitter. We're going to be announcing the lucky winners a little later on in the show. And we asked you, you know, to give us what you think of the property or what that property means that that we posted uh, on our social media. And we even said, look, we can even respond in your, uh, you know, mother tongue because we want you to be able to express uh, what it means for you and I'll be sharing who the lucky winners are later on on the show and we're also still running that incredible competition that is running on our Facebook page uh, that is of course the pinned post on Facebook where we want to see the comments uh, for that particular post we of course uh, had a big goal of reaching 20,000 comments and every single weekday you stand a chance of walking away with that 500 rands cash uh, I'm going to wait for my colleague Abiola to let me know how much is in the money bag actually uh, it'd be great to see if it rolled over so I see we did have a rollover on Friday so we've got a thousand rands in the money bag uh, so you can walk away with that thousand rands we'll see who the winner is remember you have to be watching us live in order to claim your prize while we are still on in order for you to walk away with the prize so halfway through I'll let you know who the potential lucky winner is and uh, they need to drop us a text down here below. I hope it's one of you at home who are watching us on our Facebook page uh, so that you can claim your prize. Well, this evening we're talking about something that I am very excited about. And before I get ahead of myself, you can see I took a long weekend, you know, even forgetting uh, to talk about the other great shows that you can look forward to uh, at 8 p.m. here on Private Properties social media pages. It's a Monday, so you can look forward to the Home Shoppers, the Home Shoppers show uh, that is with Chad. And it also comes to your screens every Friday at the same time. And if Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, you can catch Umbali or with the Farming Podcast, tackling all things agriculture. And Wednesdays, Esti Klaassen brings you the first time home buyers show, which is always in conversation with people who not only walked that journey, but have gone on to grow their property portfolios from strength to strength. But those are the great shows that you can look forward to every single weekday at 8 p.m. Uh, I'm sure that many of you, of course, always watch. I love the comments that you always have do keep them coming and this evening i first want to find out from you what did you get up to this long weekend uh, i hope you got some rest i saw there were so many weddings uh, that were happening maybe you got married uh, do let us know down here below well this evening we're talking about something that i you know i was saying to our guest that we haven't actually had a designated episode on this specifically uh, i mean we're nearly 350 episodes into the show and this is the one topic we haven't uh, you know 
dealt with for the whole half hour. And we're going to be looking at understanding occupational rent. Uh, I think oftentimes many people who buy their properties encounter this thing called occupational rent and don't always know what it is. So we're going to be looking at what is it, what is it not, uh, when does it come into play, if ever, uh, and who do you pay it to um, if you opt for it? And what are some of the do's and don'ts when it comes to occupational rent? And my guest this evening is Silna Stein, who's the Managing Director at SSLR Incorporated. Silna, good evening, and thank you so much for joining us on the show. Good evening, so much, Ngwa. Thank you so much for having me again. It's always so much fun to be with you. It's always such a pleasure to have you on the show, Silna, especially because we, we want to be able to best understand you know, legal matters in an accessible way. Because this is one of those areas we always say to people, you want to make sure you get an expert. Uh, don't try to DIY this part. And I think if anything, we want viewers at home to at the very least understand the basics. So you also know what questions to ask when you encounter this. So we're looking at occupational rent. I think a good starting point is what is occupational rent? I think actually to, to start to answer on that question, I actually want to backtrack it even more and just break down the right of ownership. So the right of ownership is something that is talked about quite often and I think a lot of people think they know exactly what the right of ownership is, but because of the complexity of this particular right, I think there's a lot of people that might not see the full picture of this right. And I really hope if there's one thing I can leave your viewers with tonight is this true appreciation of the right of ownership. So how I normally describe and explain this, this very complex real right is by using the analogy of a bouquet of flowers. Now, if I can uh, get the viewers' uh, creative juices flowing, I would like you to picture a bouquet of flowers, not the... Well, I think actually, you know what, Zama, when you saw that, there's a lot of different things happening in a bouquet of flowers. You have all sorts of different flowers and their stems and geese and stuff. And all of this together forms a unit. But if you separate one of the flowers out of that bouquet, it doesn't really change the true nature of what it is. So the right of ownership is a real right. A real right means this is something that attaches to a thing. It's a very clear, very simple right. Um, but that's multifaceted in the context of immovable property. So the right of ownership gives you the right to trade with the property. You can sell it. You can destroy it um, within certain limitations. You can't destroy your property if you are in the middle of a, a high-rise building. You should really then not destroy your property. But when you are um, when you have a property where it can be done, you have the right to demolish that property and rebuild. You have the right to use it as security. But then one of the rights that you have as part of the right of ownership is the right of occupation. And this right, if we, if we go back to the analogy of the bouquet of flowers, if you take one of the roses out of a bouquet of flowers, you're not going to destroy the bouquet of flowers, but you can trade with this separately. When you're renting a property out, you don't have to get the tenant's consent to extend your bond. You don't have to get your tenant's consent to paint the, the property. Obviously, you need to talk to them about what's convenient for them because they have the undisturbed use and enjoyment of the property. But it's completely separate. To the same level where if you, for instance, if you're a tenant and the, the, the landlord in that property wants to get a bond, the property isn't bonded, you're not gonna, it's not going to affect you in any way because the one right being the right to use the property as security compared to the right of occupation isn't attached to each other close enough to limit either one of the two rights. And so it's a very important thing to understand. And the right of occupation is very often traded 
completely outside of the actual right of ownership. In the sense that if you sell the property, we have a principle in law called Hirgat Verkoop, which says when you sell the property and there's a lease agreement in place, on transfer, the purchaser steps into the shoes of the seller and becomes the landlord. And that happens automatically. And why yeah. this is relevant to the context of occupational rent is the parties in a sales agreement can agree on when the right of occupation will transfer. Because it's a right that can be traded with separately from the right of full ownership, the purchaser would be allowed to get occupation of the premises prior to registration, but he's going to have to pay for that. Or on the other hand, the seller might retain the right of occupation post-transfer and then he must pay occupational rent. So the word occupational rent, I must say, even on my best day, I won't be able to find a better word. It's perfect because you are paying for the right of occupation. Mm -hmm. That was and a long answer. answer. Yeah, and I like the long answer, Silna, because I think it, it paints a really good picture in understanding where certain you know things fit. And and I, you know, I like how you describe it as it, it's outside of the right of, uh, you know, of occupation. So we know that you're able to, uh, you know, transact with this particular property and sometimes transfer can even happen, but this rental is then, you know, it has to do with who is occupying the place. So if it's the buyer, for instance, and we'll get to that shortly, uh, then they're the ones who, you know, uh, pay the, the rental. And sometimes as, as you've rightfully, you know, put out, you know, the, the transfer can happen and the, the, the previous owner, because there would now be the previous owner or the seller is still in occupation. So then they'd be the one that uh, effectively, you know, pays it. And, and I think let's look at then who pays is it in, in what circumstance? Because I think a lot of people uh, who may have been familiar with it may have thought it's only the buyer who would you know, pay occupational rent uh, as opposed to also realizing that, wait a minute, you know, if, if you're selling a property and it transfers, let's say, on the 15th, and you know that uh, as the seller, you're only going to have your following place of residence ready on the first of the following month. And you sort of ask that those last 15 days you stay there, then you're the one who must pay the occupational rent. I, mean, I, I had this issue with the property recently where I needed to make sure that everything is ready and you know for transfer because I, I wasn't staying in it there wasn't a tenant in it and didn't want to have you know any admin when it comes to uh, occupational rent so who's paying what in which instance uh, Silna? so actually it's a relatively simple answer the person with the right of occupation is entitled to payment of that right now that right of occupation is either already traded with. So let's use a rental, for example. I am the owner of the property. you buying the property from me. I have a tenant in place. The rent that's getting paid is due to me as the seller up to the point of transfer. From that moment, rent is due to you, who is then the purchaser and then the owner of the property. So if we take it back out of a rental context into purely occupational rent, whoever is entitled to the right of occupation, and that is the registered owner of the property, is entitled to receive occupational rent. So if the purchaser takes occupation prior to registration date, the, the money that he has to pay to the owner of the property being the seller, to occupy the premises and enjoy the right of occupation before the transfer took place, the purchaser will have to pay, the buyer will have to pay the seller occupational rent. If the seller remains in occupation after transfer of the property, then he is obliged to pay occupational rent to the purchaser. So there isn't a standard set one, but the owner of the property is entitled to occupational rent or rent. 
Mm-hmm. I am this evening in conversation with Sul Nistain, who's the Managing Director at SSLR Incorporated. We're looking at understanding occupational rent. And of course, if you have any questions and comments when it comes to all things occupational rent, you can send them down here below. I also want to find out from you at home what you got up to over the long weekend. We'll be going through those comments in a moment. I want you to take a quick break and see who the potential lucky winner of that 1,000 rands uh, that is in the money bag is let's see who's going to walk away i hope they're watching so that they can claim their prize Lucky winner this evening is Uponzo Mamelo Nsinye. Uh, that is Ponzo Mamelo Nsinye, who is a potential winner of that 1,000 Rand cash prize. I do hope that they're watching. And Ponzo, if you're watching, drop us a message down here below. I've seen you in some of the lives that we've had. So I know that you're one of the regulars on Facebook. So do drop us a message down here below in order for you to claim your prize. And this evening, as we're tackling all things occupational rent, we also, of course, ran a great competition and I'll be announcing those lucky winners at the end of the show uh, over the Heritage Day uh, long weekend and we wanted to you know hear from you and of course you came through and answered a special on our Facebook page I'll be sharing the lucky winners as well as what they get to walk away with and of course uh, taking your questions and comments on social on our Facebook page um, we've got here uh, Usemi Mashata saying good evening fam yeah, what a weekend it was. The DIY, the DIY for me was going all out, making sure I get the roof in Sushanguba House um, ready for the rainy seasons as, as the rainy season is upon us. On Saturday morning, I got the roof paint, went to paint the roof and fix where it needed to be repaired. And I did that from the help of some guys who are normally do who normally do DIY with me. And we did it in a day after the after effects. I was so tired on Sunday. And to, tonight I have fully recovered and it's fully recovered and of course has uh, is also now tuned in and I think that's such a, a big thing and one of the things about being a property investor uh, or even a homeowner for that matter is understanding that there's certain maintenance work that you need to do uh, we're approaching rainy season so if you didn't get to doing all the checking the gutters and making sure that that leaky roof has been fixed you want to do it uh, now before rainy season start uh, I know that that's something that I need to do in in some of the properties so thank you very much there Sammy it's actually a great reminder uh, for me to speak to the team to make sure that we attend to that. Uh, Umenzi Butelezi commenting on the topic that we're exploring this evening, that is, of course, understanding occupational rent, saying, I have to pay one month's occupational rent. As a buyer, it helps uh, get you ahead if you have cancelled your lease where you were renting. And, and that is quite a big one, right? Especially when the property that you're buying is, in fact, vacant, um, as opposed to if, let's say, the current tenant also has to wait until the end of the month when their lease uh, is also up. Uh, Paulina Nkosi on Facebook saying on, on Friday at Matsulu we had an event for boys and girls teaching them about prep and Mateo Boza, our local comedian, was there, of course, sharing there uh, what she got up to over the long weekend. Now, you know, Silna, I think when we look then at our, at, at you know, occupational rent, we certainly have an understanding of, you know, what it is and under what circumstances it gets paid. Perhaps, you know, take us through the, firstly, the amount. Let's actually debunk the amount. I think let's start there. Before we get to the nitty gritties of the OTP, let's debunk the amount because I know I've seen, uh, I get asked this quite a lot, uh, you know, what is the, the standard rate or the going rate or the legal rate? Uh, many of us, you know, in the industry, we use 1%, but we know that that's not, it's not written in stone anyway. Uh, perhaps demystify for us the, the going rate for occupational rent. Yes, so you, you said it perfectly. It's the going rate is 1%, 1% of the purchase price. So the truth of the matter is, I think that 1% is just like, sort of an industry thing where people started using that as more or less some sub guideline to how much you must be paying for occupational rent. But the truth is, 
Occupational rent is no different in any way to rent. And the reason why I'm saying this is payment of occupational rent or payment of rent where you are renting the property is simply reimbursing the owner for having the use and enjoyment of the right of occupation of that particular property. So it's the exact same thing. So the true value of your right of occupation is exactly what it would have been if it was a rental. So that would have been my starting point um, if, if I have to calculate or decide on occupational rent. If I had to rent this property out, what would my monthly rent have been? You can even reduce that then to a daily rental amount. But I mean, from a month, you can easily do a prorated um, calculation if the property transfers. So uh, you would typically look at your normal rent, what you would have paid. Very often, depending on the area, that is more or less 1% of the purchase price. But in some areas, you might pay much more. Your, your rent might be much more than 1% of um, the purchase price of the property because that is what rentals are in that particular area. And then I would probably go more for the typical rent because this is what you are paying for. You're paying to use the right of occupation. So, so you can be guided by, by either one, 1%, or the rent in the area, but as everything else in a contract, this is highly negotiable. So say, for instance, the seller is desperate to start getting money in, and the seller would be more than happy to have the occupant, the purchaser, take occupation and deal with that right of occupation as he sees fit, be it to personally occupy the place or to place a tenant in the property in the meantime, which is 100% allowed because the right of occupation doesn't mean you have to physically be in the property with your own stuff and body. It can be you can then trade with that right when you have that right. So if it is a situation where the seller is desperate to start getting some cash in, the parties can engage, negotiate for a lower but cash um, payment on a monthly basis to the seller up to the point of transfer or to the other side. If the parties decide that the seller needs to be in occupation of the premises after transfer and the purchaser is only going to say start doing renovations or what if the plan is with the property in six months from registration, give or take. And the seller um, doesn't have a lot of cash to pay for, for the occupational rent. The parties can agree to reduce, for instance, the purchase price of the property and allow the seller to remain in occupation for, say, three months. And they absorb that occupational rent in the reduction of purchase price. You can trade with this right very creatively, but just make sure when you do creative things with the right of occupation that you just chat to a property lawyer um, and, and make sure you record it correctly. So, so typically, occupational rent, because you are paying for the right of occupation, would be exactly the same number that you would be paying for a rental in that particular property. Mm. I, I love the, the point around make sure that you're dealing with a property lawyer because I think this is also one of those instances where uh, if you're a property investor and we're even seeing this off air, I've seen you know, different investors uh, find creative ways when it comes to you know occupational rent, um, especially when a transaction is relatively prolonged and they sort of structure that into their deal, um, that registration is going to take slightly longer than uh, perhaps two or three months and they almost build it into how they structure a deal. So if you want to go about doing something like that, you absolutely need to make sure that you speak to the right experts. Uh, more of your questions and comments at home. We've got a 
question here coming through on Facebook from Um Kateko Ahape asking, if I buy a property where there is a new lease between a seller, a tenant, and a managing agent, what happens to the rent? Do I automatically inherit the lease agreement and pay the managing agency a commission, or it's strictly between the current owner and his arrangements and nothing to do with me? The offer to purchase says the owner will make the property available upon registration. Uh, the lights even had to go off and be all dramatic uh, with this question. And the, and, the, and the big thing there is also that last point, right? Where the, where the owner uh, asserts that the property is going to be available upon registration, and yet there's a new lease agreement in place. Uh, I, I want you, I, I feel like the lights went off because of, of how, <laughs> because this is one of those matches where the owner can't say something like that. But, but, and, and let's assume it's a, it's a fixed term lease agreement as opposed to a month to month, because at least with the month to month, it's, it's easier to kind of, you know, navigate. So let, let's make it a, a fixed term lease agreement. Oh, my goodness, my heart on that one. I almost wanted to dim the lights on my side just for good measure. Um, so, like I like I said earlier, uh, I was talking about the um, principle of hier God verkoop. This happens by way of law. There's no, you don't need to do an addendum, you don't have to change anything. And that is pretty much set in stone Unless, I, I will get to the unless, no, no, let me just explain the right of, uh, um, well, that hier gaat voor koop principle. So hier gaat voor koop, as you can clearly hear, is a Dutch law principle. So it's very important to, to know about this principle because I think it very often ends up causing so much heartache and pain. And if people just knew about it, it, it would have saved them a lot of time and effort. Hier gaat verkoop, if, if you translate it to English, it basically says rent goes before purchase. And what that means is your right of occupation that you've traded with as the owner of the property and you gave it away to a tenant in the form of a rental. You can't just take that away. Even if the property is being sold, you're selling the property with that lease agreement in place. And you can't just cancel the lease agreement because you are selling the property. What the, this principle says, and it's a very old um, Dutch law principle that's very well, well um, recorded in our law, is that it, it happens ex lege by way of law. The lease agreement transfers, um, even though the seller's name is still written in the landlord line, the purchaser, who is now the owner of the property, becomes the landlord by way of law. Now, the only way of cancelling that right of occupation is A, if your lease agreement allows for it, or in the context of a residential property, then it's governed by um, the Rental Housing Act, specifically Section 4, 5, no, so not 45, <laughs> 4, subsection 5, subsection C of the Rental Housing Act says that a landlord may cancel a lease agreement midterm, so during the subsistence of the fixed term agreement, but there's two conditions to this. The one is it has to be recorded in the lease agreement. So for all the leaseback, TPN leaseback readers out there, I know exactly where this one sits, clause 22.1, uh, go have a look at that. That's what we're dealing with there. And the second requirement is that the reason why the landlord is cancelling the agreement may not constitute an unfair practice. Now, specifically in the TPN leaseback lease, we have drafted in only two reasons and only two grounds on which the landlord may cancel the, the lease agreement in terms of Section 45C. And this is when the landlord wants to sell the property or when the landlord wants to take occupation of the property. Now, there's um, no conflict between the Rental Housing Act and the principle of Hirgot voor Koop. The interaction is actually quite interesting. And uh, just for the benefit of the, re the readers, I've done an article that's sitting on uh, the SSLR website, specifically 
um, going into details of this interaction between Section 45C of the Rental Housing Act and uh, the principle of here hot work work. Because mm. it's really important. So in the case of this viewer's question, if your lease agreement, if the seller's lease agreement does have that provision, so you are lucky and that landlord was clever enough to use the TPN lease back, he can give the tenant two months written notice of termination of that lease agreement, and that would be 100% legal. If, however, for some weird reason, the lease agreement does not contain this clause, unfortunately, Section 45C of the Rental Housing Act now tells us now the landlord can't cancel that lease agreement because of uh, the interaction with Section 14 of the uh, uh, Consumer Protection Act, which would now require the tenant to be in breach of a material term of the agreement to allow the, the landlord to place the tenant on terms, give him 20 business days to remedy his breach, and only when he doesn't remedy his breach would he be allowed to cancel. Other than that, the lease agreement is proper in place. So my recommendation is always to a purchaser, if the seller says, the, the property will be vacant, but you know there's a tenant in there. Make sure that you get a copy of, of that lease agreement so you can look for yourself and see if the uh, requirements of Section 45C has been met so you can cancel the agreement as the landlord from transfer on certain uh, time notice, usually two months, and then you can have occupation of the premises. However, if you can't cancel, Remember, at least from the date of registration, you're entitled to that rental income as the purchaser. So, you know, all's not lost, but the viewer's question extended to the managing agent. And actually also on our website, I also have an article on specifically this. It, apparently, I write articles for funsies. Um, so a very important uh, question there, what happens to the mandate with the, rent, with the rental agent, the managing agent, in the form of, of rental now, not uh, managing agent on a sectional title. Very important, that mandate agreement, the management mandate agreement was only concluded between the landlord, the previous owner, and the agent. And that right does not carry through with here hot work work. So, mm -hmm. The, the, that's what I always say to um, the rental agents that I train. Make sure you record your procurement, so your placement commission. Quantify that in a specific number. Because even if the property is sold, but the landlord was supposed to pay your placement commission over a certain period of time, you still secured in that payment but the management component of the mandate can't carry through sale and no managing agent, no rental agent is allowed to contract to contract in the future. So you can't contract with a party that's not even a party to the mandate agreement to compel them to keep you as the rental agent. Unfortunately, that part of the agreement can in fact be cancelled and will automatically be cancelled on transfer and mm. the purchaser can then continue with the procurement part of the agreement so so you may you retain the tenant but the management element the purchaser can do himself or appoint another estate agent or if he's happy with this one mandate but now it's a new mandate agreement to continue mm -hmm. with the remainder of the lease from the date of transfer. Mm -hmm. And we've got to, I'm going to squeeze this question in. It's coming through from Ru Romano saying, I recently purchased a property for 780000 but my occupational rent I will be receiving from the seller is 7400 Are there any deductibles, for example, commissions? No, your occupational rent is... Is, is completely separate from your purchase price. Even though it looks like it's sort of related to each other, it's completely separate. Um, so, so that would be the price that the parties agreed to. 
Mm. Well, Silna, we're going to leave it there this evening as we're running out of time. I'm going to squeeze in the last comment there um, that came through from Semi Mashansa saying Zamandonga ish, maintenance is something else, but also preventing is the best so we don't lose too much money. Hashtag DIY guy. And that's a very important one for all the property investors and, of course, homeowners. You don't want all these costs to stack up. Uh, and that's a very important thing. Silna, I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you so much for having me. And that is Silna Stein, who's the Managing Director at SSLR Incorporated. It seems my lights are still on long weekend mode for, uh, for some, uh, you know, for, uh, for some event. I don't know why, but we'll, I'll, I'll forgive them. Uh, I'll, I'll forgive the, the on and off. I think they're still in a, in a party mood. Um, and of course, before we wrap up, we're going to be announcing lucky winners. Uh, and I see that the lucky winner of that 1000 Rand cash prize is in Indeed, watching us live. So, Bonzo Mamelo and Senior, congratulations. You walk away. So glad to kickstart the Monday with a winner watching us live and, of course, able to walk away with that cash prize. And we also have the other three lucky winners that we're announcing who entered the Heritage Day competition that we ran on Friday, where we asked you to caption houses uh, that were posted on our social media pages. And we've selected three winners who are each going to walk away with 500 rands in cash. I'm going to start with the... uh, uh, entry that we've got on uh, Twitter and on t- Twitter we've got Uviki uh, Manswane Viki Manswane saying hashtag private property uh, and hashtag in my language so that definitely is the property of her dreams uh, we've also got Ripore on Facebook saying um, uh, Ri is saying this is a beautiful dream house it has four rooms very beautiful inside and out and beautifully decorated and the main woodlands here Hills Free Estate. I'm um, also uh, using that hashtag, my heritage, my pride. I love this entry. It's coming through from Ursa Swayo and That is such a beautiful surname. I've actually never heard it as a surname before. Uh, who responded also on our Facebook page? They also walk away with that 500 rands uh, in cash. And they say, San Bonani, Ikealama Pupo Ami, Uba Nekaya Elise, Eli Pepile, Neli Kulugan, Ganjena, Gungaleta in Jabulo, Nogutula, and Pilenis of Azalibami, Ganyenami, Ama Pupo Aya Fezega, Slagulungele, Nizo Sebenzisa, E private property, Uguti, Nitole, Inclu Entle, Genani, Eli Pansi. Ah, I love that. So that is Ushaswayo, Ashwatrayo, rather, and Dualentle on our Facebook page. And you also walk away with that 500 rands in cash. It was a big Monday. Big Monday. I think it's it's actually a great way to start off the dreaded Monday after a long weekend. Many of us tend to not like the Monday after a long weekend. Uh, you know, giving away lots of cash. Our lucky winner was watching us live, was able to claim that prize. And of course, the three lucky winners who entered on social media. That's certainly your cue to always make sure that you keep your fingers on the pulse, follow us across our social media pages, enter the competitions. You might be one of the lucky winners. You can follow myself at Zaman underscore K on Twitter and on Instagram is always tackling all things relating to property. And that's how I'm going to leave it. And even my light is telling me I must leave it. Uh, of course, look forward to the Home Shoppers Show with Chad at 8 p.m. I'll be back on your screens tomorrow evening at 8. Until then, hope you're staying home and staying safe.